The Walt Disney Company is the world's largest communication and entertainment company. We're talking about a whole empire that under normal conditions has more than 200,000 employees and whose enterprise value, that is, the market value of its assets, a figure which takes into account both shares and net debt, amounts to almost $300 billion. To give you an idea, this means that at the time of making this video, Disney was one of the 30 largest companies in the world. Founded on October 16th, 1923, this multinational in the world of entertainment has become, almost 100 years later, not only one of the great icons of American culture, but also an emporium that controls television stations, film and television production, theme parks, cruise ships, and even its own streaming distribution platforms. An emporium that, in 2019 alone, had a turnover of almost $70 billion, and a tax-free profit of just over $11 billion. By the way, a curious fact. Can you tell me who the first character created by Disney was? No? I'm sorry, but almost everyone thinks so. But it wasn't Mickey Mouse, but rather Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. But, well, that's another story for another time. The fact is that in 2019, Disney had one of the most momentous years in its entire history. On 20th of March, they signed off on a deal valued at some $70 billion to take over 21st Century Fox, a major entertainment holding company. An acquisition that has given Disney control of the well-known 20th Century Fox film and television studios with its entire catalogue of productions, including channels such as FX and National Geographic, sagas and series like Avatar, Alien and The Simpsons, and streaming platforms like India's Hotstar, among many other assets. And that's not the end of it. Just a few months later, in November 2019, Disney Plus, its long-awaited video-on-demand service, began its launch. That is, Disney created its own Netflix, Walt Disney's big gamble for the coming years. All of these operations were piloted by Bob Iger, who until February 2020 held the position of CEO and is currently chairman of the board of directors. Considered one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, since he took over Disney, this company has made key acquisitions such as the Pixar Animation Studios, the comic book company Marvel, and Lucasfilm, the producer of the Star Wars saga. All of that, of course, in addition to the purchase of 21st Century Fox and the launch of Disney Plus that we have already mentioned. However, after a 2019 packed with good news for the company, we have moved on to 2020, a year in which everything has gone wrong as a result of the coronavirus. Disney has been hit hard by the measures taken to combat the pandemic. Its theme parks, hotels, cruise ships and resorts have had to close or operate at a minimum, and the movie theatres have not fared much better either. In spite of all this, Disney remains one of the favourite bets of many long-term investors. But when you think about it, this is to be expected. Historically, it has been a solid money-making machine for its shareholders. Just take a look. Well, the fact is that recent events have made us here at Visual Politic take notice. In this new collaboration with Value School, we have asked ourselves a few questions. What can we expect from Disney in the next few years? Why do long-term investors still gravitate to this company so much? How will the coronavirus affect it? What are its great assets for the future? Well, in this video, we are going to answer all these questions. But first of all, let's get to know exactly what business this company is doing. A business empire built on four pillars. Friends, the Walt Disney Company's empire rests on four great pillars. If we rank them by turnover in their last year, using 2019 as an example year, this would be the order. Firstly, with an income of just over $26 billion, we find the division compromising theme parks, hotels, cruises, and the sale of products and licenses. Among the most important assets that they either own or license are the world-famous Disneyland parks in California, Paris, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Tokyo. Plus, of course, the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, the largest entertainment complex in the world. 
We are talking about a complex that has an area of just over 100 kilometers square, houses four amusement parks, two water parks, six golf courses, several shopping centers, sports centers, and 27 vacation resorts with more than 30,000 rooms. To give you an idea of the enormous dimensions that we are talking about, 30,000 rooms are equivalent to more than half of all hotel rooms in the state of Hawaii. This division, which in addition to the theme parks, also includes Disney's cruise ships and resorts, has soaked up 75% of all Disney's investment budget in recent years. And as you can imagine, it has been the business segment most affected by the coronavirus. During the second quarter of 2020, sales from this pillar fell by 85%. <laughs> Then second on the list by income, we have the media division, perhaps the least known, but currently most profitable arm of the company. This includes cable television channels such as ESPN, FX, National Geographic, and others. The commercial television business of ABC, one of the three largest channels in the United States, and local television stations such as KABC in Los Angeles, WABC in New York, or WLS in Chicago. With a turnover of around $24.8 billion and an operating profit of almost $7.5 billion, this division is the most profitable in the group. However, there is a slight problem. The growing popularity of streaming services presents tough competition that raises many questions about the future viability and profitability of these existing services. <laughs> In fact, this is one of the main doubts that exist among many investors, but we'll talk about that a little later on. For the moment, let's continue. In third place are the film studios. The production and distribution of the works created by Walt Disney Pictures, 20th Century Fox, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Pixar, and some other smaller studios generated revenues of more than $11 billion against an operating profit of about $2.5 billion for the group in 2019. <laughs> And finally, we have the division that includes streaming services, the jewel of the crown, the most promising bet for the future of this company. And take note, because we are talking about one of the most influential groups in the world. In just a few months since its launch, and before it was even launched in many markets, such as Latin America or the Nordic countries, Disney Plus had already exceeded 60 million subscribers by the end of August 2020. <laughs> But it's not just Disney Plus. If we also take into account the other streaming services controlled by the company, such as Hulu and ESPN Plus, then the number of active subscribers exceeds 100 million. And that's not counting Hotstar, a popular service in India. This makes Disney the second largest group of paid streaming video platforms after Netflix. The problem with this division is that at present it is not focused on making money. It is focused on growing at all costs. But now that we know how this company is structured, how about we take a look at the stocks and the main concerns and hopes of investors that have been published so far? What is the future of Disney as an investment? Let's take a look. Threats and hopes for a change of model. Like the rest of the market, during 2020, Disney's shares have taken a beating. But as you can see, even though SARS Coronavirus 2 caused the revenues of its largest division, the vacation resort, theme park, and cruise ship division to plummet during the pandemic, the share price has hardly been affected. At the time of preparing this video, Disney shares were trading at almost the same level as exactly one year ago. And in a way, the strong recovery that the shares have experienced since their lows in March has had a lot to do with the strong evolution that their streaming service is registering. And if just one or two years ago there had been doubts about Disney's ability to adapt to the times, now all those concerns seem to have disappeared. In a world where more and more content is consumed, Disney is the king of production, far ahead of the rest of the competition. <laughs> But it's not just about production anymore. Now it's about direct distribution via streaming platforms. Remember that in just one year, Disney's streaming services have reached more than 60 million new subscribers. And the question is, can it continue at this rate to become number one and unseat the powerful Netflix? And remember, this is not a trivial question. Let's look at it this way. At the time of making this video, early September 2020, the market value of Netflix is almost the same as that of the entire Walt Disney Corporation. That's despite the fact that Disney has many more lines of business and much larger and more valuable library of content. In fact, according to McCary Research Estimates, the analysis unit of the McCary Investment Bank, the projections for next year are that Disney will achieve about 60% of the total turnover of Netflix with its streaming services alone. 
And not only that, as we have seen, Disney produces much more content, for example, for its television channels, content that it can potentially market through its own platforms. This provides smart economies of scale. And another very important factor, no other content company, absolutely none other, has the ability that Disney has to monetize its content through its theme parks, merchandising, in its hotels, etc, etc. Do you want an example? Check it out. February 2020. Disney's immersive new Star Wars hotel will begin taking reservations later this year. CNN. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is a whole new kind of experience. You will live aboard a Star Cruiser and you will be able to immerse yourself in the history of Star Wars. Anne Morrow Johnson, executive producer, Walt Disney Imagineering. Another good example can be found with the launch of Mulan, an animated film that will be available to Disney Plus subscribers upon payment of a fee that in the United States will be around $30. In other words, thanks to the enormous popularity of its characters, Walt Disney is going to do something relatively new. Combine the subscription revenues of streaming platforms with the pay-per-view model, i.e. direct sales of new content on the same platform. Okay, we don't know if it will work or not, but what I can tell you is that it's a clear example of how the Burbank, California headquarters are thinking about how to squeeze every last dollar. These businesses, like Marvel and Star Wars, are movie and television businesses, but they are also big consumer product drivers and have a growing presence in parks and resorts. Bob Iger, Chairman of the Board of Disney. And the fact is that this is not an issue that Netflix has yet to resolve. Not being able to create and consolidate characters that can generate income beyond the streaming quota. Now, that being said, does that mean everything looks set for Disney? Well, no. Many investors also have doubts. Not about the company's business model, but about its possible returns. You know that not every good company is necessarily a good investment. So what are their objections? Well, beyond the coronavirus, it mainly has to do with a change of model. Now let me explain. As we have seen so far, the most profitable division of the group has been the media, cable television and commercial television. Well, the fact is that this division, along with the film production and distribution division, plus movie theaters or third chains, counted for more than 50% of the revenue and almost 70% of all the group's profits in 2019. And friends, we are talking about two business units that are beginning to suffer from the arrival of streaming platforms. <laughs> Cable TV providers are losing subscribers, cinemas are losing clients, and advertisers on commercial TV are moving to other forms of digital media. And the question, the big question is, will Disney achieve equivalent levels of profitability? Take a look at this chart, for example. As you can see, during 2019 and the first nine months of 2020, the return on invested capital has plummeted. After 20 years of almost continuous growth, the ROIC of 2019 and 2020 has dropped back to the levels of the beginning of this century. And no, it's not just about the coronavirus. The 2019 figure is very representative. The point is that at this point in time, the business of streaming platforms is a loss-making business and is subject to fierce competition and rising costs. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, Plus, HBO, Apple TV, Film in Sky. There are more and more platforms competing with each other and willing to pay more for content, which obviously narrows the margins. And take note, because market studies warn that the price variable is very important for customers, the most important variable of all. So, in a nutshell, no one doubts the future of Disney as a company, but there is a certain fear that the change of model will end up meaning changing a profitable business with good margins into one that is not so lucrative. It's even more of a concern when some of the biggest players in the industry like Amazon or Apple don't even have the clout to make money with this business. They accept running them at a loss in order to attract customers to their other features. And that, that complicates everything even more. <laughs> Then again, the purchase of 21st Century Fox, coupled with the coronavirus, have caused the company's net debt to skyrocket, just at a time when it seems its profits may be starting to shrink, at least for a while. Well, these are, my friends, the two points put forward the most often by those who have some reticence concerning this company. In short, our goal with this video was to present you closer to Disney and present you with the ups and downs of an extraordinary company whose future seems at least as good as its past. But now, I'm shining the spotlight on you. Yes. That's right, you. What do you think of Disney? Do you think it can generate returns as good as those it has generated in the past? Come on, take a stab and leave us your opinion in the comments. And if this video that we've prepared with Value School has been interesting, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to Visual Politic. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.